Hello and welcome. This is day 12 of Excel World Cup Bootcamp. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the mod function. But first, just a quick rundown of this week. Uh, we'll start with yesterday. So many problems. <laughs> uh, first, uh, I showed you some uh, some code and then had it off my recording area while I was doing it. And second, I forgot to put uh, the stuff I was going through on the file online. So that's online now. I've also added a second tab that has... The, the format for the get.cell, the format for the VBA one liner, and it has the longer VBA code that I showed you. If you want to take any of those, you're very welcome to. Um, so that's yesterday. Uh, tomorrow is the last day of Excel World Cup Bootcamp. Uh, uh, so today is going to be sort of last technical day. Tomorrow, Giles and I are going to do a, a joint live stream just like we did to start it off. We're going to run you through one kind of process on the day because the day after tomorrow is the first esports round of the season. So we'll just kind of show you, the, you know, the email you'll get, the link, how you'll fill the answers in, the, the kind of, you know, mundane but necessary stuff just so that there's no surprises on the day. That also means that this is your last chance or like, I don't know, at some point in the next 24 hours will be the last chance to sign up for the round if you want to take part. And I cannot emphasize enough how much I encourage you to do that uh, because I, I hear this from people all the time. You're probably thinking to yourself, I'd like to take part, but I should do a little more to prepare. Maybe I haven't watched all the videos yet. Maybe something, 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 something. I, I honestly think of this as like saying, well, I, I can't go for a training run because I'm not fit enough. How do you think you're going to get fitter by going for a training run? This is your training run. Uh, so yeah, just, just do it. Dive in. Do badly. I did very badly the first time I entered an Excel competition, but I learned a ton from doing them over the years. The the sort of the time pressure, the short feedback cycle is exactly the conditions for learning something quickly. So just just dive on in. Don't wait to get ready. The other thing that's about to expire is uh, our coupon code. I've mentioned a few times with coupon code Bootcamp, you can get uh, like five of the nine. Uh, esports cases from last year's Road to Las Vegas free on the FMWC website until the first battle, which is almost now. So last chance to go get that as well. Um, anything else to mention? Oh yeah, on Thursday, uh, so it's it's battle day, uh, but I'm also going to be on the live stream, so you can uh, you can watch me sweat <laughs> under less prepared conditions uh, than than my usual video uh, and see if all this stuff I've been teaching you uh, does me any good. Uh, that might be fun. Uh, all right, anything else to mention? I don't think so. So let's talk about mod. I, I this, this felt like a good one to finish on because it's not sort of strictly necessary. There are ways to kind of work around it without knowing this function, but it's something that can come in handy quite a lot. And it's something that there's a very good chance that you've never heard of. So let's just quickly explain the math behind it. This is a little bit like I've mentioned before that like the lambda function, you know, calling it lambda connects it to a rich intellectual history of the lambda calculus and mathematics and everything. And calling this function mod connects it to modulo arithmetic. And there's a good sort of intellectual foundation there. But it also just makes it confusing to people because what does mod mean? And how many people know what modulo arithmetic is? Probably a lot fewer than know how to divide one number by another number. So let me just break it down for you. If you divide this number by this number, and the result is this, round that down to a whole number, whatever is left, so in other words, there are 14 sevens in 100, and what's left is 2. So 14 sevens is 98, the remainder is 2. So if you divide 100 by 7, the remainder is 2. If you divide 365 by 30, it goes in 12 times with a remainder of 5. If you divide 135 by 2, it goes in 67 times with a remainder of 1. If you divide 136 by 2, it goes in 68 times with a remainder of 0. So this remainder, when you divide one number by another number, is the mod function. So mod gives you the last column directly. So just mod of uh, 107 gives you the remainder when you divide 100 by 7. If you type equals mod, it gives you this prompt. So it's number is this number that you're dividing and divisor is what you're dividing it by. So the idea is super simple. Why do you care? It's super helpful for cycling. Uh, it's, it's actually, this is one of the things that's, I feel like it comes up a lot in esports, but this is actually super useful in financial modeling as well. Cycling through the hours in a day, the months or the years in a, or the months or the quarters in a year, days in a week, but also in a bunch of esports stuff like cycling through cells on a game board, cycling through letters in the alphabet, uh, that kind of thing. I just realized that I haven't opened up all the files that I meant to show you. So I'm going to pause the video for a sec, open those, those all up, and then I'll show you a bunch of uh, esports games that this comes up in. Okay, I'm back. So 
here is uh, the sort of quintessential example of mod, which is you're moving around a game board. If you roll a six, you go to six. If you roll another six, you go to 12. If you roll another six, you go to 18. Then you roll another six, you go to three. Uh, so 18 plus uh, six is 24. Take that mod 21 and you get the three that you end up on, uh, which is, again, it's just just like going around a clock, going around a game board, and this comes up a lot. So this one is from the Excel Collegiate Challenge in 2022, uh, but very much the same idea in the uh, one of the knockout rounds of the Excel World Cup in 2022 was this uh, Collect Them All by Rainier Wessels, which is, for legal purposes, definitely not based on the game of Monopoly. Um, so game boards is one thing, racetracks is another thing. This is, uh, this is from the case At the Races uh, by James Curtis. Uh, which was, I think, the second last round of the road to Las Vegas last year. Again, race track, race car going around a track a bunch of times. Um, you know, similar thing uh, came up in the ESPN battle. Again, cars racing around a track. Um, another one, just spinning a reel. Um, you know, you spin the reel a certain number of times and which one of the 19 things does it end up on. Um, and then a slightly less obvious one uh, is this one, Passing Notes uh, by Willem Gerritsen, um, which is about ciphers. Uh, so, in other words, if you if you shift a letter along by, say, three spaces, then A becomes D, uh, but Z circles round and becomes C. And so, again, you're interested in, you know, the, the shift is whatever number of spaces you want to move plus your starting point modulo 26 to get you back to something in the range of letters. Um, so that's the kind of thing that it comes up for. I'm not going to solve a bunch of cases now. That's just to sort of give you a flavor of where you might use it. Um, one thing, or two, two quick things to close out on. One is uh, mod is always zero based and an offset can be helpful. So if you're talking about, you know, the the nth letter or the nth square on the board, you don't think about there being a zeroth square on the board. There's squares number one to 21. So by default, if you give mod, you know, one to seven or one to 14 and it cycles back around, it will go one to six, then zero, then one to six, and then zero. If you wanted to go one to seven instead, uh, then you can just subtract off one and then add one back afterwards. And if you want the numbers to land in some other range, so for example, if you want them to land in the range 97 to 122 because you're interested in ASCII character numbers for lowercase letters, uh, then you can just subtract off 97 and add back 97, uh, and that'll work just fine. Um, so that's that's the one thing to know, and then the second thing is just to be aware of, uh, oops, to be aware of the behavior with negative numbers. Um, so, you know, divide three by seven, you get zero sevens and a remainder of three. Divide one by seven, remainder of one. Divide zero by seven, remainder of zero. As a human, you might think of it as, well, there are no sevens in negative one or in minus one. Uh, and so there should be, you know, zero and a remainder of minus one. But again, the answer always ends up in the range zero to six. And so the way to think about this is there are minus one sevens and a remainder of six. You, depending on how you think about it, you may or may not find that counterintuitive, uh, but you, you just need to be aware of it. I would say 10 times more often you will be using this for only positive numbers and it won't make any difference, but you just need to be aware that that's how it behaves. So, you know, minus one, minus three, and minus seven all have, um, all have sort of one, uh, minus one sevens in them and then remainders of six, four, and zero. Um, I think that's it for today. So, uh, did I mention the live stream? I think I mentioned the live stream at the start. <laughs> I'm losing track. But anyway, we're doing a live stream to close out the boot camp tomorrow, the day before the session goes live. We'll talk through uh, what to expect, a little bit of closing thoughts, and it's going to be live uh, 10 a.m. New York time, 3 p.m. London time. So a little bit later than Giles usually puts out his videos, a little bit earlier than I usually put out mine. Uh, and if you want to come along, ask any questions in the chat, uh, please do. Uh, I'll see you there. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching.